We're going to start right off with uh, some information uh, regarding inflation. And we're going we're gonna to do a little quiz here. Uh, Ashley, do you want to put the first picture of the lumber uh, up? We're going to give you an example of how inflation affects things. And it is a messed up deal. Uh, this is uh, from a friend of mine. You can see the lumber they've got. They've got their pickup filled with it. Um, they're building a deck. Now, somebody was going to build it for them. Um, a couple of months ago, and the, the cost for the wood where they bought it themselves for this amount of wood was $3,300. So I'd like everybody to put in the chat what you think this same amount of wood today will cost or did cost them actually. So if we could get everybody's participation, that would be great. I want to see who understands uh, and, and sees the, the cost of how these things work. Now, this is here in California. Um, you know, wood doesn't have a special tax like everything else in California does. Uh, nonetheless, you know, it has been infected by inflation. So two months ago, $3,300 for what you see in the back. Today, I think you guys are going to be surprised. All right, who else? We've got a, what do we got? We got a, a $5,800 cost, a $5,500 cost, $10,000 cost, a $5,000 cost, a $21,000 cost. Come on, everybody. I want to see everybody put a guess in there. $6,500 from Corey. Uh, $9,000 from Ashley. All right. Last call. Anybody else got a, got a guess? All right. The number, drum roll, please, uh, for this bought this was bought saturday so two three days ago 615 dollars 615 so it went from 3300 dollars down to 615 dollars that is how inflation is whipsawing everything around one year ago this amount of lumber would have been about 300 dollars so it has doubled in a year's period of time but it went up from 300 to 3300 and now down to $615. All right, now can you put the other two pictures up? We're gonna do this again, um, but we're going, the commodity we're gonna look at is not wood, but cardboard. Uh, inflation on wood has come back down. So, but it's gone back up on other things. So we're gonna see an example of where it's gone back up. I'm not gonna have you guys, well, I'm gonna have you guys guess, actually, we'll do this again. Um, I don't know if you can show both pictures at the same time. That's possible. No, I've got them separated out, but I can kind of toggle back and forth. Let's do that. Okay, so <clears throat> once again, another friend was, uh, was moving, uh, just moved recently, and they bought all of these cardboard boxes. There's two pictures of them. We're going to take a look. Now, once again, this is in California, so we're going to see, we're going to put a guess as to what this stuff costs. Now remember, wood prices come down. Not that one. Okay, so there's this pile of boxes, and this is post move, so some of the boxes are flattened, and uh, you know they're looking for someone to take these off their hands now that they're done moving. So there's two piles of boxes, this one and the other one. All right, let's go back to the chat. Let's everybody guess what you think these box costs brand new. $1,000, $1,500. I think you guys are gonna be surprised about this too. Three to $5 each, okay. $200, three to 500, three to $5 each, $400. All right. All right, drum roll, please. The total cost of all these boxes was $1,100. Now, here's the problem. This is in California. And so California has a recycle tax on, not on wood, but on cardboard. The recycle tax added about, as far as I can tell, about 75% of that 
was going to California as a recycle tax. So the real cost would, would have, should have been something like $300 for all those boxes, but in California, $1,100. So inflation has an effect on these things, but uh, regulation actually has a larger effect um, or overregulation, and in the case of us here in California, has a larger effect on this whole uh, this whole deal. Now, the, the inflation is controlled by not you know we all grew up in in school eighth grade economics. Uh, you know you learned that inflation was a factor of supply and demand. It's today inflation is a factor of manipulation and mismanagement, in my opinion. So you guys probably we've showed pictures of this in the past. Uh, off of Huntington Beach, we looked at the number of ships that were waiting to be offloaded in the Los Angeles, LA harbors, the two largest harbors in the United States, or combined the largest. Um, and there was an article in USA Today, I think it was last week, that showed there are 44 boats, 44 large cargo ships uh, waiting uh, all the way down the coast to get offloaded because of, the, and this is because of mismanagement. And so that's why, for example, if you go by any car lot today, you can't find cars for sale, new cars for sale, it's because they cannot get the chips that they need to build these cars. So it's, it is a mismanagement thing. For some reason, the auto companies didn't think ahead and think that, you know, this thing will come back. Um, and it is also a mismanagement management thing. The government doesn't allow anymore the mining of what's called rare earth metals. All these chips need a certain amount of rare earth metals. And I'm not real fluent on what these are, but these are, you know, particular things, uh, particular specific metals that uh, we allow the Chinese to mine and we buy from them. And they're sitting out there on boats waiting to be offloaded. So that's the mismanagement part because they got rid of all of these employees at the dock during COVID and they haven't spent time rehiring people. And so we just can't offload like we used to. And over-regulation, the government doesn't allow us to mine these rare earth metals, even though we have the ability to do so in this country. So this thing is, a, it's a giant cluster. There's no normal supply and demand at work here. You could just see that right there from the wood and the cardboard examples. You just, it, it is a messed up deal. So. How is this going to affect our business? Uh, you know, look look for those two factors. Look for mismanagement and look for government regulation uh, to be the leaders, a bigger leader than supply and demand. There are more houses for sale today than there were a month ago, and there were more a month ago than there were two months ago. Uh, does that translate into cheaper prices? In the old days, it would automatically translate to cheaper prices today. It's going to depend on the market. It's going to depend on the number of buyers. It's going to depend on regulation and things like um, the federal unemployment insurance, which ended yesterday. So there's now eight million, eight to nine million people uh, who were getting paid by the federal government to sit home that now got to go get a job, unless a state comes in and re and uses the money that was spent was given to them by the federal government to pay the landlords who hadn't been paid. Now the government, federal government has allowed the states to use that to extend unemployment benefits. So we're gonna take it away from the landlords, even though it never got distributed to the landlords, and we're gonna pay people to sit home. Some states will do that. I would pick New York as the number one leading state to do that. California may or may not. Um, and it just up and down the, the area, you know, generally the Southern states won't do it and some of the Northerns may. So we'll have to see how that comes. Uh, and that's the, the mismanagement part. Also, things like eviction extension play into this market. And the eviction moratorium was turned over by the Supreme Court. We've talked about that in some past episodes. And, uh, you know, generally across the board, there is no bar to eviction. Some states have the ability to and have extended it previously for a little bit longer, like California's, you know, till the end of this month. Uh, New York was to the end of last month, but New York right now is the only state who is extended beyond. Um, they've gone ahead and basically said nobody can be evicted until the end of January of 2022. So that's once again, I believe, a mismanagement on the on the part of the state of New York. It's 
going to adversely affect the market. Um, there's lots of swirling parts in this marketplace out there, and you guys got to keep your eyes on all of it. Um, I would say, you know, your best deal is the deal you're working on. And if it makes financial sense because you're able to acquire it at a cheap enough price and you've got a good exit strategy, you're going to make money because there are still a ton of buyers out there, uh, not counting just new home buyers. And by the way, um, uh, uh, feminals are the large, one of the largest buyer groups. And these are female millennials, feminals. Uh, they're one of the largest buyer groups out there right now. So, um, you know, you're going to see a lot more people come to the marketplace uh, wanting to buy houses. And in some areas, because it has not been mismanaged, think of places like Texas um, and Florida, you're going to see good, solid, hot markets continue. Other places where the government has stepped in and, you know, intentionally or unintentionally affected the marketplace, it will definitely have an effect on your business. So as always, bring your questions to us. We can try and give you our best two cents worth, but keep in mind, I do watch this stuff pretty closely. And I've been here, uh, you know, a couple of years already, and I've seen a lot of this stuff, never this level of mismanagement um, or this level of interference. But uh, you know, there is always opportunity. Anytime there is a mismanagement, there's a difference between the perceived value of the market and the real value of the market. And it could be either way. Could the real value could be higher and perceived value is lower or vice versa. Anytime there's a difference, that's called arbitrage. And that's the space we play in here is the arbitrage business. You guys are in the arbitrage business. And, you know, chaos creates opportunity. And I believe we're in a high high level of chaos right now uh, nationally and in particular in some states and i would really keep my eye on the market but there is a lot of money to be made out there if you know what you're doing